சார் பேச ஆரம்பிச்சிடலாமா ஹரியோம் a happy hello to everyone children have a nice day today let us deal with vocabulary and we are going to deal with the first part of the question paper questions 1 to 14 one mark questions objectives what you called objectives vocabulary actually means knowing a word means learning a word you will have to enrich your vocabulary in english so that you will improve your communication skill this is a must and it is said that english has the largest vocabulary though it has only 26 letters it makes wonders with the largest vocabulary and learning a word is a very big process if you want to learn a word actually you should know how to read how to spell how to pronounce the word there and you should know the meaning of the word the opposite of the word and there it goes so today's session will be dealing with vocabulary questions 1 to 14 this is your first part in your question paper first synonyms synonyms nothing but meanings a word or phrase that means exactly or nearly the same as another word or phrase is called synonym that is similar in meanings for example i've just given you the mother seagull swooped upwards look at the underlined word there swooped what is the meaning of the word swooped move very quickly hope you understand the situation the seagull was hungry and it was tempted by the fish shown by the mother and thereafter the mother in order to motivate just swoop brings the food nearer and then swoops upward moves very quickly and the second lesson the attic has always been favorite with the children what is attic actually it is the place where you dump all things it's a top uh, the room the building top of the building below the roof which means loft It is a 55 foot sailing vessel built indigenously in India locally built built in India innately So hope you understand the meaning of these words so synonyms means meaning of the words this synonyms could be of two forms literal meaning contextual meaning literal meaning what do you mean by literal meaning as you read in the text for example if i just give you the word, the mother was happy the mother seagull was happy the same word happy could be expressed in other form the mother seagull was delighted to see the young one flying okay so the word happy is expressed in the term of delighted the whole family was enjoying the even joyfully that is also another meaning for happy so this is what i mean by contextual going along with the text sometimes you won't know the meaning but while reading the text i think you can understand so synonym means exactly or nearly the same as another word and it could be of two forms literal meaning and contextual meaning literal meaning as i already told you the entire family was very happy the happy uh, the family was delighted at the uh, act of the seagull so the verb given in other form that is what you'll have to understand okay this is the first step in learning a word if you want to learn a word first of all you should know the meaning of the word next antonyms antonyms nothing but opposite antonym is a word opposite in meaning to another word for example swooped swooped i told you move very quickly and the opposite could be very slow okay so whenever you learn a word you should know the synonym and now you have learned i have taken the same word purposely so that you will know swooped the meaning of swooped is actually move very quickly and what could be the opposite form quick slow fast slow okay and we don't have to use any means of repulsion repulsion what could be the uh, opposite of repul repulsion to stay away to move but here to attract to come closer i indulged in baking abstained i indulged in like you were just close in making you were involved in doing some activity and here abstain means staying away staying away and again antonyms could be of two forms here either you will be going with the regular form or you will have to uh, 
change the word using a prefix for example noble ignoble legal illegal okay so this is how you will have to identify and this is a pattern we are following okay so you'll be given with the sentence and identify the underlined word you will have to spot the meaning for the underlined word or spot the opposite for the underlined word you are provided with four options and you'll have to choose the most appropriate the word that is very close so we have learnt what is a synonym and what is an antonym synonym which gives you the exact meaning or nearly the same meaning as another word and opposite which means the opposite in meaning next while learning a word it is a noun actually and suppose we use a noun you have eight parts of speech and here we are dealing with a noun a noun that denotes one person is what is called singular singular and plural a noun that denotes one person or thing is said to be in a singular form example a boy a girl when a noun denotes more than one person or thing it is said to be in plural form more than one boy more than one girl you call it by boys girls and this is how we form singular and plural not all terms take yes there are certain rules to be followed and we'll just go by the rules the spelling rules for plurals so the third form the third form is singular and plural form a noun that denotes one person or thing is said to be in a singular form and a noun that denotes more than one person or thing is said to be in plural form spelling rules for plurals see i've just taken all this from your text also but it it would be good if you are doing it in general just try to learn to apply the rules so that you will find it easy don't stick to your book back exercises alone jo go by the general rules so that you can answer any sort of question plural means more than one and here we are doing with certain rules most nouns form their plurals by simply adding yes for as i already gave you the example boy boys girl girls similarly pencil pencils so you look at the words ending in yes just the addition of yes circle circles table tables saucer saucers shirt shirts desk desks nouns ending in ch yes sh z or x will take es along with it watch watches words ending in ch then words ending in z buzz buzzes a honey bee buzzes splash splashing of water splashes beach beaches glass glasses rash rashes bus buzzes match matches march marches box boxes peach peaches so you have a set of words ending with ch ending with s bus buzzes ending with sh rash rashes beach beaches peach peaches words ending with z buzz buzzes and words ending with x box boxes and then yeah those end with es so whenever you form plural form with the words ending with ch yes s h z or x they'll take es in nouns ending in y before which there is a consonant the y changes to i and then add es first you'll have to transform the y into i and then you will have to add es so plural form is making one into many where you'll have to add es but this es takes different forms with the words ending with ch that's what we have seen earlier and now we have the words ending in y city c i t y and whenever you have a consonant before y first you'll have to change your y into i and then you'll add es city cities navy navies just note the difference in the children y 
I which before which there is a consonant. You know what are consonants? Vowels a, e, i, o, u, and here you have a consonant. Navy v, baby b, pony n before y. All these are consonants. So whenever you have a consonant before the word uh, letter y, then first you'll have to change this y into i, and then you'll add e s. Colony colonies, story stories, factory factories. However, I announced that end in y before which there are bubbles, then yes is added. For example, see d a y, and you have a bubble before y. The previous slide, we had consonants before y, and thereafter you had to change your y into i and then add e s, and this form where you have vowels here, day days. Just you will have to add yes. Valley, valleys. You have e before y. Bubbles a e i o u. Journey, journeys. Spray, sprays. Story. See, you have vowels before y. It's enough if you just add yes. In fact, if you have consonants before y, first you'll have to change i y into i and that add yes. In nouns ending in f or f e, yes is added to make their plural forms. Reef, reefs. Cliff, cliffs. Giraffe, giraffes. Gulf, gulfs. Chief, chiefs. So you have just added yes to the words to certain nouns ending with f or f e. However, in some nouns the f changes to v. For example. Knife. F will have to be changed into V, and then you'll have to add ES. Knife, knives. Leaf, leaves. Scarf, scarves. Loaf, loaves. Thief, thieves. So we are seeing two forms here. Certain forms where the word nouns end with F or EF, e, you just add S. If you want, you can take it in another way. All these exceptional forms, usually F gets changed to V, and then the addition of ES. Hope you understand the difference. In most common nouns that end in O, ES is added to make their plural form. Potato, potatoes, echo, echoes. However, there are certain exceptions. Where you just add yes alone. Pianos, photos, dynamos. Okay. Larger words and foreign words simply take on yes. For example, soprano, sopranos, cargo, cargos. Some nouns have only one word to indicate both singular and plural. Salt. You don't have plural form. Look at the quantity there. And then series, sheep. Species, cod, and yet another forms. There is no singular form at all. Scissors. You'll have to use both so that you will cut. Jeans. You just can't wear to one leg. So they come in pairs, like spectacles, braces, pants, shorts, etc. And here I think you can also include subjects like mathematics, economics, etc. There are certain words where you have the change in the entire structure. Look at this word foot. O O is changed to E E. You have change in the vowels there. Foot becomes feet. Mouse mice. So you have change in the vowels there. Foot feet. Mouse mice. Woman women. Don't read it as women. It is women. Goose geese. There are certain uh, forms. Where you have the addition of en, ox, oxen, child, children. Okay, hope you understand the difference between the two forms. Here you have the change in the entire structure where the vowels got changed to the other form, o becoming e, and this is another form where you have the addition of en, ox, oxen, child, children. And here you have the hyphenated forms here. 
spoonful spoonfuls remember children only nouns will take yes or es along with it and here you add yes only to brother to make it brothers in laws it's not brother in laws it is brothers in law so you can convert a word into a plural form only by adding s or es to the noun form datum data cactus cacti index indices lava labe okay, you have so many examples like formula formula alumna alumne focus foci instead of cactus you can have focus foci we have uh, been doing this in 6th standard so i think you have a number of words in your mind now based based on these rules i think you can just do it so this is the third step whenever you want to learn a word first you'll have to know the meaning of the word which is given by synonym then you'll have to know the opposite of the word which is given by antonym and then you have the singular made into plural form by adding yes es ies changing the structure by changing the vowels and then you have rules words uh, rules for the words ending with y whenever you have consonant or vowel how are you got to change with ies and es and then words ending with f fe then you have some foreign words given here like cargo cargos of course we have exceptions to and going by these rules i think you can do well the next form is a deriving a new word how can you derive a new word just by adding or fixing or joining or placing a unit of a sound or a letter or a group of words so that you get a new word this is what you mean by affixation fixing joining joining just a unit of sound look at the definition given here affixation means adding affixes to the root word to form a new word affixes can be classified into prefix and suffix what do you mean by pre before suffix after so whenever you add a unit of sound before the root word you call it prefix and whenever you have added a word after the root word you call it a suffix if an affix is attached to the beginning you call it prefix if it is attached to the end you call it a suffix and this prefix can be defined as a letter or group of word letters attached to the beginning of the word for example literate illiterate literate is a root word here and literate a person who knows reading and writing illiterate who doesn't know qualify disqualify natural supernatural urban suburban nutrition malnutrition okay so prefix hope you have understood what is a prefix a prefix is adding a unit of sound just a unit of sound or a group of letters to make a new word suffixes can be defined as a letter or a group of letters added to the end of a word for example child childhood able ability exam exam examination establish establishment slave slavish now this is how you will be asked with the questions like form a derivative by adding the right prefix to the word what could be added to this for it so this is very important while reading the question form a derivative by adding the right prefix prefix you will have to add before the root word for head suppose if you have suffix to be attached then you have headlight headmaster so read the questions properly then form a derivative by adding the right suffix to the word patriot patriotism announce announcement perform performance so you'll have to read the questions carefully see if it is a prefix you'll have to add before the root word if it is suffix you'll have to add after the root word so the fourth form is deriving a new word by adding a group of letters either before the word or after the word 
Whenever you add a group of letters before the word, you call it a prefix and then after the root word, you call it a suffix. And sometimes, we just go for the shortened forms and we love that too. How to shorten it? Usually, those are called the contracted forms and how do we shorten it? For example, doctor, you take the first letter and the last letter given as dr, engineer, er, professor, prof. P R O F dot there. So, uh, abbreviations and acronyms are shortened form of words or phrases and this is typically a shortened form of words used to represent the whole while an acronym contains a set of initial letters from a phrase that usually form another word. Now, what is the difference between this abbreviation and acronym? Both are shortened forms. When the abbreviations are read as such, then you call it abbreviations. For example, B B C, British Broadcasting Corporation. Suppose if I just ask A I R, I don't read it as A I R. Instead, I read it as air. So whenever you have the uh, shortened forms read as a letter, a word itself, then you call it an acronym. So abbreviations and acronyms are often interchanged, yet they are quite distinct. The main point of reference is that abbreviations are merely a series of letters, while acronyms form new words. Hope you understand the difference. Abbreviations are read as letters only, whereas acronyms are read as words. N A S A. You don't read it as N A S A. Instead, you read it as NASA. I S R O. You read it as ISRO. These are acronyms. Insat, Indian satellite. Hope you understand the difference. Whenever you read it as a series of letters, you call it abbreviation. Both are shortened forms. When they are read as series of letters, you call it abbreviations. And when they are read as a new word, then you call it an acronym. For example, I used to point out this. School is an acronym of various qualities. So, S yes, standing for uh, sincerity, H for honesty, O for obedience, okay, optimism, and L for loyalty. Okay. So, whenever you read the series of letters as a word, then you call it an acronym. And contractions here, these are mainly based on verbs here. Apostrophe M, am, I'm, you read it as I'm, I am, read as I'm. Apostrophe RD is read, it's for R, the apostrophe stands for the missing letter there, R. And this can be your we are, we are, they are. Apostrophe yes actually is and has also. He is or he has. She is, she has. It's, it is or it has. Okay. So, apostrophe is yes, both for is as well as has. Apostrophe we have, I, you, we, they, okay, when spoken form, we do not stress as have like, I have done it, I have done it is shortened like I have done it, we have done it, they have been, they have been doing it. Look at the form used here, how have you contracted the forms here, it is actually the auxiliary verbs is, am, are, will, apostrophe, l, l, will, I will, I will, actually to be read as I'll, you'll, he'll, she'll, it is she will actually, it'll, we'll, they will. And then you have apostrophe D which actually stands for had as well as would, I'd, I had, I would, you'd, you had, you would, he'd, he had, he'd, she had, she would, she'd, but you don't stick the entire word there, she'd, she'd do it. She would do it, she would do it, it would be a lot of fun, it would, it would, we would, they would. Now, this is what you mean by contraction is nothing but shortening a form there. So, we have just she, seen the shortened forms as abbreviations and acronyms. So, how to use this in the form of verbs and then contractions with auxiliary verbs and not. Auxiliary verbs are helping verbs which show the action. Here auxiliary verbs are can, could, did and these are models actually can, could and this is a do form auxiliary are, are not, we are not, you are not, can't, 
scant, sometimes say the scant also cannot, couldn't, could plus not, didn't, you know, we use all this for your question tags. Question tags are nothing but confirmatory questions used towards the end of the statement, isn't it? Aren't we? Won't you? Didn't they? Okay, so contraction. Contraction is nothing but the shortened form. And here we have shortened the forms here. I started with doctor, saint, S T D R, professor. So abbreviations are shortened forms. When they are read as series of words, you call them abbreviations. When the series of uh, letters are read as word, then you call it an acronym. So we have also seen the contractions of uh, the pronouns as well as the auxiliary verbs here. And this is a type of question you will be getting. Choose the correct expansion of the abbreviation CCTV. Hope you understand the difference here. One is abbreviation, the other one is acronym. CCTV, closed circuit television. Read the questions properly. Abbreviation, acronym. Hope you understand the difference between abbreviation and acronym. Abbreviation, reading the series of letters as such, CCTV. And here acronym, you have the series of letters here, but you will have to read it as INSAT, in Indian National Satellite. Okay? So, whenever you learn a word, you should know the meaning of the word, you should know the opposite of the word, you should know to frame the plural forms, then how to contract the forms here. And then, the most important uh, part here, we have phrasal verb. Phrase, what is a phrase first of all? Phrase is nothing but a group of words and here in the group of words, one word is compulsorily a verb and sometimes it is an adjective or preposition. So, it is an idiomatic phrase consisting of a verb and then preposition or adverb, sometimes both. Put on, where? So, I want to point out the idiomatic phrases also. So, phrases as such is a group of words and whenever you are talking about phrasal verb, you have one verb and an adjective or a preposition or sometimes a both. And coming back to idiomatic expressions, you have a unit, you call it as a unit group of words to be read as a unit to get a complete meaning. Put on plus on. Put is actually a verb on a preposition. So, individually they have different meaning, but when put together you get where. Come in, come plus in, verb plus preposition. Try again, repeat, walk away, avoid, time out, short break, go on. Okay. It is a very simple form, it is a group of words of which one is a verb and the other one an adjective or preposition, mostly we use a preposition, sometimes very rarely we use both and they do not convey the individual meaning of the two forms here together, they give you a new meaning. Similarly, you have this idiomatic phrases. Now, what is the difference between this idiomatic phrases and the phrasal verbs? Phrasal verbs put on, you understand to where. Coming to this idiomatic phrases, for example, if I say the cat is out of the bag, it means I have let out the secret. So, it does not convey the literal meaning here, it gives only the figurative meaning here, this is the only difference. Whereas, the phrasal verbs, they give you the figurative meaning, it is understood, put on. So, by knowing the verb, I think you can understand the meaning here, but here the entire meaning varies here as a you will have to read it as a unit here to understand the meaning. So, it does not convey the literal meaning here, it gives you a figure that the secret is out. Similarly, once in a blue moon, very rarely, usually school children play truant, they do not come to school and now I think you are in a quarantine, I do not know how you spend your time wasting or <laughs> So, that is what usually you come to school very rarely, that is once in a blue moon means very rarely and still it has become rare. So, this is a idiomatic expression. 
Then the women cricketers on the ball. It is an idiom which means when someone understands the situations well. Hope you understand the difference between the phrasal verb and an idiomatic expression. One form gives you the verb plus preposition, but they can be a similar meaning. They don't have individual meaning here. And then you have this idiomatic expression, which gives a figurative meaning. Okay. Here, sometimes you have the root word the same with a different particle here. So, with a different preposition. For example, you have the root word look throughout. Suppose if I add up to it, then it is look up. The meaning is refer. When I change this up with or replace that with a different preposition at, then it is watch, look after. Look, children, you have the same root word with the different prepositions, then they can be a different meaning. The same verb followed by different prepositions. Look up, which means refer, look at, watch, look after, take care of, look for, search, look up to, admire, look over, investigate. And our workers dash their jobs well, you will have to choose the most appropriate phrasal verb here. We are provided with four options, carry off, carry over, carry out, carry for. Now, carry off. Now, using these prepositions, I think you can make out the answer. If you are thorough with the prepositions and their meanings, you can easily do with this filling. It is a carry out here. Next, let us deal with compound words. So, compound more than one, like plural form only. Compound is more than one and here you combine two or more words here and they function as a single unit. And this compound words could be of three forms here, closed compound where you do not have space between the two words here, flower, pots. You read it as a single unit here and then open type where you have the space between the two words, living room. And then you have hyphenated words like brother-in-law, commander-in-chief and so on. So, compound words nothing but the combination of two or more words. And this uh, compound words can be made by adding the parts of speech here. Sometimes you add a noun with another noun. For example, kitchen plus garden. You can go up and go for some other examples like school, boy. Okay. Noun plus verb, mouthwash. Noun, mouth, verb, wash. And then you have verb plus noun, watchman. Preposition plus noun, overcoat, gerund plus noun. You know what is a gerund? Gerund is a verbal noun. It is a verb plus ing form. It is a non-finite verb here. And then noun, bleaching, powder, walking, stick, swimming, pool. It goes like that. Noun plus gerund. Here, housekeeping. And as I already told you, sometimes you have adjective preposition plus noun, good for nothing. And then you have hyphenated word with noun plus preposition plus noun, mother in law. So, this is how we combine the words. Here, you will have to be thorough with the parts of speech. There are eight parts of speech and you will have to identify and you will have to fix the answers here. For example, choose a suitable option to pair it with the word. So, you have two forms of questions here. Either you will have to pair or you will have to choose the right combination for the word, for the compound word day, dream. Day, noun and dream is your verb. So, compound words, so for combination of two or more words and they function as a single unit. You have three forms here, closed, open, hyphenated. Closed compounds, you do not have space between the two uh, words that you have joined. And here you have open where you have the space and then you have the hyphenated form brother-in-law and whenever you form compound words, you go by the parts of speech, either it is noun plus noun or noun plus verb, verb plus noun, a preposition plus noun, sometimes you go with the adverb also, overthrow, overthrow and sometimes there is a confusion between this preposition 
and adverb. There, read the word again, read the words again and again so that you will be making it. Okay. Now, coming to this prepositions, a preposition is a word or phrase which comes in front of a noun and tells a relationship between the two nouns here. Mostly, it deals with position, time, and a direction. So, prepositions are very simple, uh, they show the relation uh, to the other nouns or other parts in a sentence. For example, this is a common example I usually point out in the class. Uh, the book is on the table. You have the book, the table, both are nouns and how are these two related by the presence of this on here. If I just remove that on, the book will fall. So, that is what you will have to see. So, that is the usage of preposition given here and it could be identified by the position, time and direction as we have this uh, distance, speed and all in math, no? just like that. Now, you have kinds of prepositions, simple prepositions at, on, in, by, to, for, from, off, with, etcetera, compound prepositions. They are generally found by prefixing prepositions. For example, a, about, about, a, bow, above, along, among, before, below. So, this is your compound prepositions. You have yet another form called phrasal prepositions. Here, it is given by phrase prepositions. It is actually prepositional phrases here, according to because of, on account of, in addition to, with regard, by means of, in spite of, owing to, in case of. So, you have all these prepositions, you have unit of prepositions, you have cluster of prepositions and phrase is nothing but group of words and here phrasal prepositions, group of prepositions here, okay, for the sake, by virtue of and you have yet another form called participle preposition which is given by uh, concerning ing form attached to it, curing, considering, regarding. Now, let us see the usage of prepositions here, beside. So, quite confusing only, beside and besides. Beside, sit beside me, Ram is sitting beside, go with, next to, by the side of. Whereas, besides refer to in addition to. Besides Ram, Govind also wrote an essay, in addition. Look at the difference between beside and beside. These are some of the common uh, prepositions that we use regularly. Okay? And then since, uh, since indicates a point of time. Sheila has been working uh, here for 5 years since 2000. You can just say I have been uh, studying in the school since. Started once upon a time and still going on where you will have to use since. I have not seen Gopal since 1966, 1996. And then for indicates a particular period of time. Ganesh has been abroad for 4 years. This is what you mean by. So, it started and still going on. He had been there for 4 years. It limits the timing here, particular period of time. Ravi has lived in India for a decade. Decade is a period of 10 years. See, for and since are used with present perfect, present perfect continuous, past perfect and past perfect continuous tenses. So, you will have to understand these two are very important mentioning the time here since that started once upon a time and still going on for indicating a particular period of time. Between and it indicates a relationship between two people or two things. Sita is sitting between Meena and Radha whereas, among indicates more than two. So, Mother Teresa worked among the poor. Okay. So, sharing between two is called between and more than two you use among them. At indicates a point of time, they arrive at noon. Okay. Here you can just say, I live in Salem at Ananagar. So, in refers to very big places and at particular. So, this is what you mean, indicates a point of time or a particular place, time, etc. At is also used for small and less important places and towns. I live at Adyar in Chennai. In is used for countries and big towns for peoples. And similarly, for the date on, you use on, year, in the year. That is how we use this. And coming to this linkers, linkers, linkers are nothing but conjunctions or connectors or joiners as we say. They are used to connect two names or two nouns or two phrases here. And here we just go by different forms. Conjunctions are given by coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions. We have various conjunctions used here. It is given in the form of table. See and not only but also as well as moreover. So, to add information. Rama and Sita went to forest, you can say. She is not only an actor, but also a singer as well as this is how you will have to do in addition. So, conjunctions and not only, but also as well as I think I give you the sentences here, which goes by adding and then, but this is opposite form actually. She is rich, but humble. She worked hard, yet she scored less. Still, I still do not understand what is the problem. Nevertheless, 
On the other hand, though, although, even though, however, all these refer to the contrast terms or the opposite forms. So, whenever you want to add, you can use it. So, conjunctions are given by and or but yet still. These are coordinating conjunctions, okay. And goes by addition or alternative but to express contrast yet still illative. And apart from that, you have subordinating conjunctions. So, now these are conjunctions uh, come in addition to the uh, main clause where they carry their own meaning here. They have their own function since, as for, because, since, then, you will have to read that as for, because, since, then, before that, after that to indicate cause, reason. Since, since she was not here or since she was ill, she could not attend because since then, before that, after that, okay, indicating reason. And after that, I did not meet her at all, okay. Therefore, consequently, then, so, so that, so you have a hyphen there, just add that hyphen, hence, thus, to show result or purpose. When, while, after indicates time and then if, unless, whether, in case, provided that to add condition. Okay. If you work hard, you will pass. Unless you work hard, you will never pass. Whether. Okay. So, these are the adding conditions here. Or, either or, neither nor. These are actually called correlatives. Not only, but also, no sooner than that. Or, either or, neither nor. They express choice here. Likewise, similarly, to denote comparison. Where, wherever to denote place. Okay, and this is how you will be getting your questions on the question paper. My mother called me dash, it was playing while I was playing football. And here we combine the pairs of sentences using a prop. This is how you will get your questions there. We came late, we did not miss a train. Now, you will have to combine the two pairs using the conjunctions here. You will have to remove this comma and it is understood. You came late, but you did not miss the train, but, but you did not miss the train. So, this is how you will have to identify for which you will have to be thorough with the table. The usage of conjunctions either in the form of addition or expressing contrast or uh, indicating reason or result or uh, time etcetera, etcetera. Okay. I think we, uh, with this we come to an end. So, vocabulary is nothing but learning a word children and if you want to learn a word, first of all you should know how to spell, pronounce the word there, then you should know. Yeah, I will just come from the beginning, so that it will be easy for you. First, you will have to know the meaning of the word, then you will have to know the opposite of the word. I told you, so both synonyms and antonyms uh, can be of two parts, uh, two forms there, either literal or contextual. And then you have antonyms, opposite forms, and here again, uh, you will uh, go by the regular forms or by uh, adding uh, prefixes there, then denoting a noun. If one you call it singular, more than one you call it plural and we had seen the rules uh, to uh, add the suffixes either s or es or ies or changes in the vowels, the structure and then the foreign words and then certain forms they remain the same both singular and plural are same and then you have uh, en added to oxen children and then other plural forms in the form of hyphenated words. Then affixing a unit or a group of letters there. Whenever you add a group of letters to the root word before you call it prefix and after the root word you call it a suffix. Shortened forms in the name of abbreviations and acronyms. Abbreviations of course, the shortened form and read as a series of letters, acronym, read as a word. You have the contracted forms for the auxiliary verbs given here. And then you have the phrasal verb. Of course, you have this phrasal verb and enigmatic expressions in almost all the languages. And in English, they give a very peculiar meaning and they give you a very strange meaning when read as a unit only, you just can't go by separate words here. So, uh, phrasal verb, you have the a verb plus a preposition or an adjective and idiomatic as a group of uh, words there and then we just uh, have the compound words a combination of two forms 
just combining the two words with the parts of speech either as a noun plus noun or noun plus verb or noun plus adjective. Then you have preposition that relates uh, two or more nouns in a sentence there and they are identified by position, time and uh, direction. Okay, the various forms and the usage of preposition and we have linkers also. So, I have just covered only the vocabulary part, the structure of grammar yet to be done. You have tense form of verbs and other proceedings that will be uh, doing it in the uh, next session. Hope you have understood. Today we have done with vocabulary children and unless and until you enrich your vocabulary, you will never have a flow in your language. We all know that English is a global language, but I would like to go a bit higher stating that it is a, a language of survival unless and until you are thorough and you enrich your vocabulary and improve your fluency, you are not going to do it. And I do not think we will have to do only with the American and the British accent. Indian accent is more than enough, so let us do with this. With this, I wind up the uh, session and thank you. Let us meet in the next session.